Once upon a time, I played a standard deck where you would play things like Grizzly Salvage and Mulch, and you put things into your graveyard like Unburial Rites, Lingering Souls, and Crater Hoof. Alongside those things, you had Mana Dorks like Avacyn's Pilgrim, and we even had Deathrite Shaman in the deck for the Mirrors. And then, alongside all of that, as like sort of like a cohesive glue that held this wombo combo ramp and pump and smash together, we had Thraktas Confessor Angel. But they were, they were, they, people were gonna be like, well, of course the deck was good, it had Thraktas Confessor Angel, but everyone had Thraktas Confessor Angel at that point in standard, okay? But yeah, we were hoofing people. We also had like, um, Angel of Serenity and stuff as well. But here we have an historic variant of that. That deck back in the day was just called Junk Reanimator, because Junk, also a nickname for my penis, but Junk, also a nickname for my balls, but Junk was the term used to describe Abzan. Before Abzan existed. This is before Khans of Turkey roll round. You see, I might seem like I'm quite an older, refined gentleman, but I'm only 21. This is Mill Me Harder, or I'm calling it Blue Black Dredge Hoof. This deck was brought to me by Algai de Siswai on my Discord, one of my splices. Uh, Barry. Hello, Barry. Uh, Barry is a Magic and 40k fan, and he's part of the Discord community. If you didn't know my Patreon, if you pay $2 a month to get access to the Discord, the link in the description below. And the higher tier, the upper tier, the top tier, as it were, the splices, they get to have a call with me each week, and we talk through decks and submit decks, and I play them. They can be on stream, played Level of Combat earlier this week, or it can be this. Now, when he brought it to me, it was kind of like this, but it was playing a load of Massacre Worms. And it was okay. And we played a little bit of it in the call, and it was okay. And then I said, well, Barry, stop. Collaborate and listen, Barry. Why the fuck aren't we just hoofing people? Now, as you'll observe, the deck doesn't actually have a way to hard cast hoof. I toyed with the idea of playing a world tree, but honestly, this deck does not get to um, six or seven lands the majority of the time. The majority of the time, you've either won from smashing them to bits or grinding them down with hardly any lands in play, or you've lost. There are the two ways it goes. So you're probably wondering what the fuck we're meant to do. Well, what we do is we mill ourselves for four with Murphy's Secret Keeper, or we mill ourselves for three and then three again later on with Stitcher's Supplier, or we mill ourselves with Triton for two. There are main mill cards, we also have two copies of Ashiok Dream Render. When we mill ourselves, we put things into the graveyard, we get Narcomoebas, which is just bodies that block and attack and make hoof better. We creeping chill people, which damages them for three and gains us three, which pads out our life total against aggro, but also gives us the ability to uh, synergize with Silver Smoke Ghoul. Silver Smoke Ghoul is a 3-1 three, for three, that when it uh, is in your graveyard, if you uh, gain three life at the end step, it comes back tapped, and you can also sack it to draw a card, so it's got a bit of a card advantage engine built in. And then we have one copy of Narfi, Betrayer of Kings, or Betrayer King. I always say Betrayer of Kings. I don't know why. Maybe I've got a, a kindred spirit for those that betray kings because fuck the monarchy this is a legendary snow creature a zombie wizard for five mana but wait there's more it gives snow creatures and zombies plus one plus one and for three mana you can return narfi betrayer of kings oh fuck i said it again you can return narfi betrayer king from your graveyard to the battlefield he is an anthem effect for stitch suppliers for tritons and for silver smoke ghouls so we actually have a full 12 zombies in the deck to get bigger he's just a recurrable threat that makes your board scarier then we of course have a burial rites a five mana reanimation spell that i have more often than not used the five mana side to reanimate such so supplies to put things into the yard so that we can reanimate with the back end but the back end is four mana including a white for that reason our mana base has two snow recovered planes to get for fatal passages three goddess shrines and three hallow fountains so we can just in consequentially have a little bit of a little bit of white mana in amongst our mana base and then we can choose on Burial Rites to either bring back a utility piece to further our combo, or a Massacre Worm to wrap their board, or, hopefully, a Crater Hoof Behemoth. The Hoof Daddy. The big fucking ham rampaging through the forests of Innistrad. Introduced to Historic by Jumpstart. And just a bane to all who see it. You never see your opponent cast a Crater Hoof and you're like, huh, maybe I'll win. Because you just don't. One of the greatest win conditions green has ever had, so why can't Blue Black have it? If you're wondering why we're calling it Dredge, when the Dredge mechanic, one of the most hated mechanics in all of Magic in many ways, one of the biggest mistakes alongside Storm on the Storm scale, according to Mark Rosewater, there's not a single Dredge card in here, because Dredge has not been introduced to Historic. But the thing is, Dredge likes to have a second hand in the terms of putting things into its graveyard. It mills itself to get card advantage, synergy, and eventually even combo engines online. That's why we're calling this Dredge. Creeping Chill, 
is a thing in Dredge. So is Stitcher Supply in some formats and some versions of the deck as well. It isn't Dredge, because we have no cards that actually Dredge. But we are milling ourselves and recurring things from the bin. Narc Amoebas again. Big part of pretty much every form of Dredge across Legacy and Modern and Vintage. Like, it's got tinges, hints of Dredge in there, right? This is like Dredge's great-great-grandson. We're in Historic now, right? We had Vintage, we had Legacy, we had Modern... All of those things are falling apart under the weight of shit that Wizards have done in the last couple of years. And now we've got Historic, which is pretty much in the same place. Euro dominates like three out of the four I'm talking about. This is Historic. This is the, the grandchildren's format. And whilst De Death and Taxes, Legacy D&T or Staxi Workshop decks don't really have an offspring in this format, Dredge does. And I believe it looks something like this. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to smash that fucking bell and subscribe. And if you're looking to pick up some singles or some sealed product, go to channelfireball.com and use the code KENOBI. And if you want to support the channel directly, there's a link to Patreon in the description below. Big shout out to Ultra Pro as well, the other sponsor of the channel. Let's fucking play some magic. Let's go. Righty, righty, it'll be all righty. Now, double knock me by hand. Two blue sources. Why are you like this magic? Next hand is two blue sources, one of them is white, no black sources, Stitcher Supplier, Merfolk Secret Keeper. Huh. No snow sources, Narfi in hand, we're gonna mulligan this as well. Tritons, tapped Lockthwain, fucking Narco. We're gonna keep this, we're gonna put Narco Amoeba and Narfi back in our deck. I do enjoy mulliganing to five, it's my favorite part of magic. I know it's better than keeping an unplayable seven, I get that. But it still doesn't feel good. Our opponent is on a full grip of seven and they're playing mono red. And we've drawn a fucking Narc Amoeba. Will you just stop magic? Mill two, game two. We milled nothing of consequence. Nothing of interest. Our opponent plays a second mountain. Surprise, surprise. As the greatest British export of all time would have said. That's Scylla Black. They zap us for two with Vichy and Pyromancer. Do they attack? They don't. I would have happily have traded. Uh, let's go for another Triton. Thought Season Fable Passage into the graveyard. Gain two, no attacks. Pass turn. Mountain from our opponent. The surprises keep on coming. They shock a Triton. I'm fine with that. They shock another Triton. I, I'm pretty fine with that. They hit us for four, taking us to 18. Light up the stage from our opponent. Cool, we draw a crate. Oh, fucking behemoth. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, we're gonna play a Stitch Supplier. We mill a Silver Moat Ghoul. Ghoul. So we've got something. Silver Moat. Silver Smoked Ghoul. If we creeping chill them, we get to get the Silver Smoke Ghoul back. Creeping chill obviously costs four mana, so if we draw it, then I guess I'll fuck myself. If we um, uh, mill it, that'd be fantastic, but I doubt we will at this rate. That's a Hazard at the Fervent. Okay, okay. Are they going to attack? I'm going to block the Vichino Pyromancer all day, all night, all day. Um, I'm going to block here. I'm going to conserve life and hopefully mill a Creeping Chill to get our Silver Smoke Ghoul back. Oh, we hit Triple Chill. <laughs> okay. That's a nine point life, that's an 18 point life swing. We nine them, we gain nine, we get a blocker back. I mean, all three at once makes our future, wait, 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 wait. At the beginning of your end step? Oh, fuck off, Silver Smoke Ghoul. Fuck off. We'll play an Arkami, but don't worry about it. I got this, I got this, don't worry. Hazaret can't even attack. She can't even lift that cannon. In a turnout for the books, our opponent has played a fourth mountain. And they've lightning struck our face down to 24. We've got such a padding of life that I feel like we should be able to maybe do something. But this being in hand, oh, it's bad. No blocks. We're just gonna take just gonna take seven here. Narco dying doesn't do anything. We'll block the hazard eventually. We drew a creeping chill. Yeehaw, motherfuckers! Pass to our opponent, who's probably just loving life over there. Soul Skull Mage from our opponent. Guess the surprising thing is they didn't play another mountain. In come the attacks. We're gonna block Vishino to kill it and we're gonna block Hazaret to pad out our life turtle. Like, reanimating a Massacre Worm is our best possible line, but we are so far removed from doing that. Here's a tap land. <laughs> Here's a tap land! Oh, fucking hell. Skull Skull Mage number two. So I guess we need to hit a Triton, we need to mill exactly Massacre Worm and an Umbario Whites, and then we need to draw a White Source on the following turn. Um, which would actually would keep us alive by two. So there's the white source. This puts us to ten then. And they have nine damage in play. Oh boy. That is interesting. We're going to snow cover planes here. We're going to creeping chill them. This will give us a blocker from Silver Smoke Ghoul. But it comes into play tapped. That's the problem. Okay. End of turn. Here he is. The one. The only. 
The, the, the useless piece of shit that is Silver Smoke Ghoul. Makes a zombie vampire. Make your fucking mind up, ghoul. And that's it. That's all they needed. That's all they needed. Yeah. Well, they say that's all they needed. They didn't do one point of damage. They could have farted in our general direction. Okay, we, we'd go to five. I haven't done the math, but I think we're fucked. Okay, yep, yeah, we are. That's cool. Good game, says no one ever. Right, this hand has three lands in it. Not a blue source. I guess the favorite passage is a blue source. We have a white source and godless shrine, so that's good. Let's keep this. I guess I'm going to just turn one play the passage to go get our blue source. Our opponent's on the play. They've multi six. So you're saying there's a chance. Temple of Abandon, scribe one. Cool. We untap and we get to play a Triton. We've got like a lot of mill in our hands. That's good. We mill not nothing good. Nothing good. Our graveyard looks like this so far. Okay. Okay. We're going to shock ourselves. We're going to Triton. Hitting such supply on our land, of course. We're going to mill ourselves for four. I kept clicking the library when I first started playing this deck. I'm now clicking the correct place. We hit double Silver Smoke Ghoul and a Narco. Not terrible. Let's put the Narco into play. In for two. I'll probably play a World Tree. I don't know if that's fixing for some sort of Jund deck that wants to go big. Or if they're actually playing the World Tree combo. I guess we'll never know because we're going to kill them before we find out. That's a Valica Awakening. Okay. They put a lot of cards from their hand back in the bottom of their library. Temple of Epiphany from our opponent there. We drew a fucking Crater Hoof again. I'm so sick of drawing these fucking things. It's unreal. I've got double silver smoke in the bin. Guess I'm going to go to Fable Passage. Go to Combat Attack them for five. And if we could bring back our silver smoke ghouls, we'll have another six. We'll have 11 in play. It's not lethal, but it is lethal after I've chilled them. Yeah, let's chill. And then they're, they're dead next turn. So they go to 10. We now have 11 power. Uh, we're forcing them to interact in some way. We've still got follow up with like Triton uh, and Burial Rites in our hand as well. They play an Ornithopter. Okay. This is scary. No one plays an Ornithopter when they're playing fair. Oh, it's just Tybalt's trickery. I see. They make a coma. Okay, it's the historic version of trickery. Cool. Okay. They make a 3-3 Serpent. We draw a Watery Grave. We're going to go looking at our graveyard first. Nope. Let's go play a Triton. We mill a Creeping Chill and a Narc Amoeba. Sweet. Zap them for three. Make a 1-1. One, one. Probably should have done this after combat because then we bring out Silver Smoke Calls that they blocked. Go to combat, attack for a bunch. Now the Mario Tritons have got Death Touch and the Silver Smoke Ghouls can come back, so that's something. Take them to one, play a Water Grave tapped. I'm gonna play a Merfolk Secret Keeper here. And Silver Smoke Ghoul number three, or the one that died during combat comes back because we creep and chill before combat. Ah, okay, it doesn't matter if we did it before or after combat anyway, we still got one in the back. They Temple of Epiphany, they scry one, they Tormod Script, which is actually really good against us. They have Mainboard Crypt, that's pretty strong. And they scoop it up, proof! Absolute categorical scientific fucking proof that we are better than the Tibble Trickery deck. Look, I even ranked up in silver. Ignore the rank I'm in. That doesn't determine how good the deck is, of course. This deck is a top tier. If there was a tier list of MTG Pro esports gamers, I'll be at the top and I'll be holding this deck in my hand. It's obviously better than Tibble's Trickery. This is a mole. We have no black sources. And two creeping chills too. Doesn't seem great. This has a black source. Two four mils. I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna put Creeping Chill back in our deck. Because we'd rather mill them than cast them the majority of the time. Temple of Epiphany from our opponent. We're gonna mill ourselves. We hit double Thoughtseize Land Troy and nothing, nothing exciting. Literally things we'd much rather dry, draw, but there we go. Double Mountain. Is this just Tibalt's trickery again? No, Tomating Voice, okay. I'll collect Phoenix into the bin. Cool, 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 cool. Good job we didn't mill them then. Let's go Fable Passage. Let's go mill ourselves again. Hit a Narco, find an Unburial Rites, Love Life. Now we want to get a White Source off this passage, really, but we can't. We have to get a Black Source. Uh, we're going to pass back to our opponent. The Ash Shock in our hand is very good if we draw another land, because it will get rid of the Arclight Phoenix in their bin. Goblin Lekimansa from our opponent. He's an electrician, look at him. I wouldn't have him do the wiring in my house. Scroll one for Temple of Epiphany. Grab a Swamp. Draw a land, love life, pay two life. Let's just play an Ash Yacht. This is, this is wonderful. That's exactly what we want to see. We're going to mill ourselves for four. Hitting a Crater Hoof into our bin. Exile in their graveyard. We need a white source to be able to, uh, to be able to, to just make a Crater Hoof next turn. If we want a Crater Hoof next turn. We only have one body in play. But we want to double play the Smurfix Secret Keepers if we draw a Hallowed Fountain, for example. And then Hoof them on the following turn. Up from our opponent, and then chart a course from our opponent. They attack our Ashiok for two. We're not going to block. They basically remove mill eight there, but having bodies on board is better for when we want to hoof them. Oh, they had a strike for the Ashiok too. Okay, that's a shame. That's a shame. We drew a Creeping Chill. 
which is not what we wanted to draw at all. Really wish we'd stop fucking drawing them, but we did. We did melee creeping chill, so I can't complain. And then we just got a player secret keeper as well and attack with our narco. All we need is that fourth land, my friends. Any land barring a tap land. Are we playing any tap lands? I guess we're playing the fucking reanimator land, aren't we? Which we probably shouldn't be. We're gonna get back at least one Phoenix here. Here it is. From the ashes, the bird has awoken. We did not draw another land because Magic the Gathering hates me. Let's play a narco amoeba. Let's go to tax and swing. I'd happily have the Stitcher die here. The Stitcher does not die. They don't block it. Makes sense. Makes sense. Crackling Drake from our opponent. It's a 10-4. That's a problem. Charcoal from our opponent. Radical Idea from our opponent. Take three. Go to 15. Draw a land. Oh my fucking god. What is going on, Magic? In for one. We're going to be using Narcos to block that Crackling Drake. They probably give it Trample or they it at us or something just to add insult to fucking injury radical idea sure radical idea sure let's check my lands in the bin one two three four five five lands in bin three in play we played 23 we have 15 16 if you include the crypt Academy flip land as well 16 land draws out of uh 32 we have a 50 well give or take a 50 percent chance of drawing it i'm gonna block a crackling drake here with a one one Take six. Do we draw a land for the love? Oh, thank fuck for that. Thank fuck for that. All aboard the hype train. It's time. Here he is. Hoof daddy. I haven't done the math. Okay. Because math is for losers. And I'm a dog scientist. And dog scientists and mathematicians, we fight like cats and dogs. We fight. How much lethal did we get? That's a lot of lethal. That's a lot of lethal. Some might say too much, but you can put some of it in the cupboard for later. You can put some of it in the fridge. Thanks for watching. I've been Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. This has been Blue Black Dredge Hoof, designed by Siswai Our Guy, also known as Barry on the Discord. Hello, Barry. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked it, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Do we need to include chart course in this deck, for example? Have you played something similar? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's fun? Or do you just play elect uh, fucking Tibbot's Trickery at the moment like everybody else does? Or Goblins? Let me know in the comment section below. Smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.